It's always nice checking out an orange dive watch, don't you agree? And this one I actually had wanted to check out for quite some time. I had seen it pop up on different uh, social media outlets and when my good friend Chris uh, over at the YouTube channel The Watch Lounge bought one and then reached out to me asking if I wanted to check it out, obviously I said yes. So. Uh, very cool of Chris to lend this into the channel. Um, I'll put a link to his channel down in the description. So this is his watch. And they can be had at very, very reasonable prices. Currently, if you go to the Carl's Krona website, they have it listed at $329. And I believe that is whether you want the uh, date or no date. This obviously is the no date. If you get the date, there's going to be a non-intrusive uh, date window just above the six indice here um, because this does house the Seiko NH35 movement then that's not very difficult to do um, that would be one downside I guess of the no date version you do have like a phantom date set on the uh, crown positioning when you go in there and even when you do the time setting you can actually feel the the gear set inside of uh, when the date would change but if you prefer this dial over the date, then so be it. Uh, personally, I would choose the date for one, uh, being that it's just above the six indice. It doesn't really upset the, bal the balance of the dial at all to me. But um, regardless, uh, Chris chose this one. So, and it is a very, very nicely um, robust built style watch. And hopefully I'll be able to portray that in the video here. You can see the case itself is um, all various uh you know brushing so you have like a, a cir you know circle style brushing along the top side and then you have a vertical here you have a fairly you know uh, smoothed out case back here it's not super rough or anything so it's going to wear nice on the wrist uh has their nice logo there and of course some basic information there you have a really, really grippy crown here. The traction on that crown is just amazing. It's super easy to unthread or thread in. You have a very authoritative pop right there. Um, and then of course you'd have the first pop out here would be your date setting. And then your sec or your, yeah, your last position is gonna be your hack and your time setting. So standard Seiko stuff here. And nice, uh, stiff crown there. There's hardly any deflection or anything like that in there. So pushing it back in and winding it, um, or screwing it back in, is very precise. And no, it doesn't give you any fear of cross-threading or anything like that. The wind on this NH35 is um, audible and smooth and consistent. So um, it's a little little different than what I've actually seen in a lot of uh, four hour movements. So a little bizarre where the first time I wound it up, I was like, wow, that's actually pleasant. Um, but uh, before I get further into the watch, I mean, I covered already a lot of things, but I want to talk about the size, uh, the case width, you're at 43 millimeter lug to lug 49 millimeter. You do have the drilled lugs and you, you can see it has a nice turn down to the lug. So it's going to wrap around the wrist really good, even though it is a little bit larger. Um, 22 millimeter lug width. The thickness on the website they list at 13.5 millimeter. Um, I would say yes, it is 13.5 if you measure to the top of the bezel. If you capture that domed crystal, it's closer to 15 millimeter, which is fine. Um, speaking of the domed crystal, it has a really nice application of anti-reflective coating on the underside, but you can see that it is a standard dome because you do get some uh, distortion there in the dial so no big deal um, it is super visible in most angles okay so now let's talk about um, the bezel action because I spun it around so you guys can get you know uh, you know 15 minutes of uh, click out of it but the bezel action is precise I mean it is um, dead on and the, the feel of it is consistent and very um, like you know a dial on a safe or something. I don't know how else to explain it, but so I'm going to shut up and I'm going to turn it so maybe you can hear it. So 
So of course you can hear that because it is very audible, but it has a nice audible tone to it and the feel on it. Um, I find turning it from the 12 to 6 position gives you the most traction. Um, when you get over towards the uh, 1 through um, 6 side of the dial, you can see how the case actually protrudes out past versus on this side, um, the bezel actually protrudes out. So a little bit of a um, case design feature that makes it just easier to operate the bezel if you go 12 and 6. So um, this strap that's on it here is a very nice flexible rubber style strap. It is very thick but pliable. You do have a sign buckle here and a single wide keeper here. It also comes with a a, a, a nice, you know, mid-grade style NATO, you know, fabric strap. Very heavy-duty hardware and also a sign buckle there. So uh, Chris was wearing it on that because when it showed up, that's what it was on. I, um, you guys know I'm not a huge fan of NATOs, uh, but we'll cover that more in future videos. So I instantly put this rubber strap on, which I'm going to give you a wrist shot here now. This is on my seven and a quarter. So you can see it is, you know, with 43 by 49 dimensions, it's gonna have some presence. Plus that dial size is actually a pretty large looking dial compared to a lot of the Seiko watches that maybe you guys are used to. So it's gonna be super legible, that's for sure. So just for comparison, we'll show it next to the Seiko Turtle. You can see very similar size, but uh, you can definitely see where that the dial size is actually much larger looking because you don't have that inner chapter. Um, it's all dial and then that bezels all the way out towards the case. So you, it's not like a cushion case like on the Seiko. Um, regarding the orange color, I'm going to show you um, my orange monster. But you got to remember this has some dial fade on it. The monster does. A traditional brand new orange monster is going to be very, very close to this orange right here. I think it's almost close to spot on. This one just has some fade from, you know, being out in the sun a lot. So overall, I think it's a really good watch. Um, Carl's, um, Carl's Krona is a small, I don't want to say small, but it's a smaller kind of town um, in the southeast lower portion of Sweden on the Baltic Sea. So that's where the name comes from um, for the company. I'm not even going to try to pronounce that uh, the model number. They do have a few other watches. Like you said, you can research those on the on their website. But I think at a price point of $329. And at one point, I think they even had them on sale for below $300. I want to say like $289. That was maybe some sort of holiday special. So you know that there was a bunch of them out there potentially purchased for $300 or below so even if you're looking on the secondary market, I think this is a, you know, if your wrist can support this size or you like a little bit, um, you know, heavier, because this does have a little bit of heft to it, a nice, thick, well-built watch, um, I think it's going to be hard to beat that price on this guy. So it does have um, Super Luminova for the Lume. Um, I'm assuming it's C3 because it's it's not weak or anything like that. It's not like crazy crazy vibrant or anything like that um, that's just with the studio lights you can see the monsters a little bit brighter um, but I mean it's hard to compare a lot of loom to uh, Seiko's loom so uh, the loom is uh, it looks really nice and it seems to last so um, I don't think you need to be worried about that there either so thanks for watching guys I will catch you hopefully tomorrow uh, my work's been crazy busy that's why I didn't get a video out yesterday but um, I'll talk to you real soon, hopefully tomorrow. I got tons of content to get over. So thanks for watching on this one. Big thanks to Chris over at the Watch Lounge. Check out his channel. Thanks.